I'm afraid this video may end up becoming a little bit more ranty. What was our main character's name? Target audience is here. Just smacked myself with the book. I'm good like that. I liked it and I didn't. Hey guys, welcome to what is supposed to be a buddy read discussion for The Girl Behind the Red Rope by Ted Decker and his daughter Rochelle Decker. I'm afraid this video may end up becoming a little bit more ranty than um, discussion maybe. I didn't really come up with any discussion questions. I was talking to Jared about this book last night and oh I just realized that this is like embossed. Anyway, uh, Squirrel. So. I ended up actually giving this book like four stars on Goodreads, um, but I got a lot to say about it. So this is going to be more some of my thoughts and stuff, maybe more so than discussion, but we'll see where this goes. So if you guys have not read The Girl Behind the Red Rope, this is a book about a cult um, that has kind of like this revelation, I guess, that the Fury are going to be coming um, and destroying the Earth. And so they decide to find a place and make a little settlement uh, so they can be self-sustained, far away from civilization, and there is a red rope around the perimeter of their place, and as long as they don't go beyond the red rope, uh, the fury will not get them. And this right away had vibes of the village uh, to me. I watched the village when I was 18. I clearly remember it, because I wouldn't have been the kind of book or movie um, that I necessarily would have watched, I don't think, but I was a nanny in England and the other nanny of the family, we went out together and um, I just remember, once you know the story of the village, it's not really that scary, but at the same time, it's it was kind of a scary movie and we lived in a mansion in the south coast of England and um, there was Gates and she made me I mean, I always was the one, but it was dark and it was like midnight. She made me go and unlock the gates while well, she stayed in the vehicle and I was just like, remember being creeped out. That's mostly what jumped out, um, sticks out in my mind from watching the village. But there was definitely village vibes about not being able to really leave their compound and about there being like these beings in the forest and stuff. Uh, what year was this written? Definitely, yeah, 2019. Okay, so like just recently. Um, definitely after the village I was going to say it feels like they watched the movie and we're like hmm we're gonna take this idea and put like a Christian spin on it so I think I did give this like a, a three and a half or a four star somewhere in there um, it's, but I feel conflicted about this book you guys so I'm not really going to have much for discussion questions if any I more want to kind of like talk about my thoughts and then I want to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Let's kind of just like, let's just chat about this book. So here is where the spoilers are going are going to start. If you have not read the book and you're interested in it and you don't want any spoilers, I would say stop watching here. Uh, for those of you that have read the book, obviously this takes a look at the spiritual side of this cult in particular, but kind of like cults in general. And I, yeah, I feel so conflicted about this book. I liked it and I didn't. Um, so like I knew, assumed we were going to be going kind of like into that spiritual realm, but I was very confused as to like who Bobby was, like if Bobby was good or not. Um, and the, the guy, the main demon guy, whose name I'm telling you, Silos, um, I was trying to figure out like what was what. And I feel like this is where I prefer Peretti over Decker because I feel like Pretty kind of like gives a little bit more answers in his books than Decker does. Decker kind of leaves things open in a way that it feels confusing. Okay, and I also, speaking of like confusing, I feel like my thoughts are going to be all over the place in this video, and I'm sorry about that. Um, but that just made me think of like, I wish and I am very disappointed by the fact that there are no, there's no follow up at the end of this book. I would have liked to have seen um, an author's note or discussion questions um, 
I'm trying to find the end of here. So it just goes straight from, yeah, the end of the book to um, little biographies of the authors. There's nothing, there's nothing in here. And I don't know who the Decker's target audience is here. Just smacked myself with the book. I'm good like that. Um, because I feel like Decker's books can really appeal to the non-Christian audience. And personally, I love it when a Christian author can appeal to the non-Christian market because then I feel like you can show them Christ through your books without necessarily having to be in your face and it can it can open up um, like Christ to them. But this one felt very confusing and I feel like if that is his target audience, it fell short. And even if his target audience was the Christian market, it fell short because the whole emphasis of this book is how we are the light and um, like pretty much quotes verses in here um, and I didn't really read anything unbiblical but I feel like he didn't really tell the whole story um, so we got this kid Eli who I think is supposed to be like the Christ figure in the book um, so I guess this is supposed to be like an allegory and obviously they kind of fall apart but I feel like the book should have pointed to Jesus more than just like you are the light. I feel like it was there there's no actual gospel to the book which I have talked about in my dear Christian publishers video before that I feel like publishers and this is Revel which I feel like they're kind of iffy on they'll kind of like publish anything there's some good Christian books from there and some that are just kind of like, hmm, really? Um, I feel like Christian publishers need to have higher standards or like standards of <laughs> just standards <laughs> of what they publish and what they consider Christian uh, publishing. I really don't, does Revel consider itself a Christian publisher? I'm not actually sure. Um, part of the division, a division of Baker Publishing Group. So I don't even know if they consider themselves to be a Christian publisher or not. But yeah, so this is kind of turning into a bit, a bit more of a rant, isn't it? Okay, so maybe I'll talk about some of the things I liked about the book. Um, I found it interesting to think of fear as the main motivator for this cult. And then I was thinking about like other cults and um, the leader of the cult in here, Rose, um, obviously had a horrific childhood and this demon, I think, is what he is supposed to represent, obviously latched onto her and used her fear and her trauma and her abuse to take hold of her and um, help her, through her, control a bunch of other people and, um, I guess, put the spirit of fear in them. And their whole town had more fury than, like, the area around it. Um, I thought that was a very interesting look into it I actually I really did like that um, because it made me think a lot about different cults and just you know people in general we live in a society of fear this last year and a half has showed that so much like even among the Christian people people that are afraid of um, like COVID and afraid of people that think differently than them you know just there's a lot of fear so I kind of liked that visual rep representation in here. Um, there's one part here where at the very end, this is like the last couple pages, page 328, Rose asks, do you think we could forget love enough to end up enslaved to the fury again, she asked. And then her, um, what was our main character's name? Our main character, whose name I'm totally blanking on, Grace. Isn't her name Grace? That makes sense. Yes, her name's Grace. Okay. Yeah, I read the book for sure. Uh, Grace says, I think we're enslaved often. Whenever we cling to this world in fear of losing something, fear is always available to us, just like love is. We have the opportunity to choose love over fear with every breath we take. And each time we choose love, it becomes more natural until it becomes our breath. And like, I agree with that. I kind of like that. Look at that. But also there's really no pointing to Christ 
um, yes, like, yes, we should choose love over fear, but we choose love because Christ chose us. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I'm really kind of uncertain of where I fall with this book. I liked it and I didn't. That I don't know if I can describe it any better than that. Um, but I would like to hear some of your guys' thoughts. I know some of you really liked it. Um, I'm trying to think if I have any more to say. It was fast-paced. I read it quickly. It was an easy read. I still feel like I just, I really prefer Peretti over Decker. And I did kind of keep the book Adam out, thinking maybe I would give it a try, but I think I am just done with Decker. I have read, I don't read a ton of what fiction authors believe or like do in their uh, free time or whatever, you know, like I don't read up the beliefs of all the authors that I read. I mean, if it's Christian nonfiction, then I feel like, well, I want them to be on the same page. But I feel like even, um, like books written by secular authors, I love seeing the gospel through their um, books. You can see light triumphing over darkness all the time, which is so great to see. Um, it's, it's just like fun to see the spirit, Holy Spirit working through story, even when people don't really believe. Um, but when it's a Christian author, I struggle because I want them to be held to a higher standard which I think they should be because if they're trying to point people to Christ, they should be actually pointing people to Christ and not this general idea that just like love is the answer. So yeah, I think I'm done with Decker and I just want to hear your guys' thoughts on this book and I don't know, let's just talk about this in the comments, I guess.